Good evening, everyone. I'm here to share with you the gospel of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. The God of heaven, the creator, desires that you would be saved. And we live in a Christian nation, so some people don't understand what the, what the concept of being saved is. Some people say, I just got saved, or I need to get saved, and they really don't know what they're saying. You need to be saved from God. And I know that sounds sort of counterintuitive, but it's the truth. You need to be saved from God by God. You need to be saved from the wrath of God to come because we've all sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. And God's wrath is aroused. It is stirred up because we've all sinned. We've all lied. Most of us have stolen. And the law of God is merely a tutor. It's meant to make you realize that you need a substitute for your sins. This is why the nation of Israel for thousands of years sacrificed lambs. It was all pointing toward the final lamb of God, the sin bearer, the suffering servant who would die for sins. When Jesus was born, it was written of him, he will save his people from their sin. And so Jesus is that lamb. Jesus is that substitute who died in the place of sinners. So you need to be saved from the wrath of God by God, because Jesus is God. The Bible calls him the image of the invisible God, the radiance of God's glory. In Christ, all the fullness of God dwelt in bodily form. This is why when his disciples asked him, he said, if you've seen me, you have seen the Father. Jesus and the Father are one. And so the gospel reveals the righteousness of God, not self-righteousness. I'm not here telling you I'm a good person or I deserve mercy or grace from God or I've done anything that is good that can save you. I'm here to tell you about a man, the Lord Jesus Christ. Jesus is the only expected person in human history. If you would just open up your heart for one afternoon and study this man, you would see things were written about Christ hundreds and thousands of years before he was born. Daniel in chapter 9 predicted that the Jewish Messiah would be killed in order to atone and cover sin. You see, God is holy. He is just. The Bible says he will not acquit the guilty. And if you'll humble yourselves, you'll realize we're all guilty before a holy God. You need something that's in between you and God that satisfies God's wrath for your sins. Scripture reveals you need a Savior, and God has provided a Savior. He has sent His only begotten Son, the one and only Son, in whom is grace and truth. And He sent Jesus here to save you from your sins. This message, the Gospel, is the power of God to salvation to those who believe. Because it reveals God's righteousness. Christ is building a kingdom. And he's welcoming you into that kingdom. However, he has terms. He has terms. It is his kingdom. And he is willing to accept guilty criminals into that kingdom. He is willing to accept the sick. He is willing to accept sinners. But here is what he will not accept. He will not accept the self-righteous. If you think you're a good person, you don't believe in Jesus. Because Jesus said, there is no one good but God. Jesus said, they hate me because I testify their deeds are evil. The gospel of Jesus Christ is specifically called an offense in the Bible. What's offensive about the Bible? In fact, the cross is described as an offense to the human race. And it's because of this. Not only is our sin a violation of God's law, but even what you think is good. If you're Catholic right now and you're praying to Mary and you think that's a good, righteous deed, that is sinful before God. If you think you have given God anything that could curry some sort of divine favor or earn you heaven, that is self-righteousness. And on Judgment Day, it will be exposed as filthy rags. And so you need to go to God as a convicted criminal, as a sinner, just like me, and say, Lord... Be merciful to me, the sinner. 
For if you call upon the name of the Lord, the Lord, who will be gracious to whom he'll be gracious, and will show mercy to whom he'll show mercy, if you call upon him and ask him for grace and mercy, you will be saved. The Word of God tells you, if you call upon the name of the Lord today, you will be saved. And you must be saved. You must be saved from the wrath of God to come. The Bible says Christians have fled for refuge from the wrath to come into the loving arms of Christ. God is wrathful. God is holy against our sin. But God is also loving. He's just. He's merciful. Whether you love God or hate God or, or indifferent towards God tonight, He's given you a beautiful night to enjoy. He gives you this beautiful city. Look at Ukraine. Their cities are destroyed. We've been given so much in America. And God has given that to us that we might turn to Him. God's goodness is meant to lead you to repentance. The fact that God is so good to you and gives you a beautiful night and freedom and air in your lungs and food in your belly, God's goodness is meant to lead you to repentance so that you would turn away from your sin and trust in the Lord Jesus Christ. Flee the wrath to come into the loving arms of Christ. Jesus said, My sheep hear my voice, and I know them, and they follow me, and I give them eternal life. The voice of Jesus is the Word of God. The Bible is the Word of God. All Scripture is breathed out by God, and it can literally make you wise for salvation. How is that possible? Through faith in Jesus Christ. Because if you're willing to come to God as a convicted criminal, which you are, whether you like it or not, the Word of God, whether you believe it or not, is authoritative over your life. Your conscience bears witness against you when you lie, when you steal, when you offend God's holiness. It tells you that you're sinning, but that law of God written in your heart cannot save you. The law of God is merely a tutor meant to bring you to Christ, make to, meant to make you realize that you are sinners in the hands of a holy God. And it is a fearful thing to fall into the hands of the living God. And so you must turn to Jesus today as a sacrifice for your sins, trusting Christ and Christ alone. Call upon the name of the Lord today for mercy, for He will be merciful to anyone who calls upon Him. Jesus said, All that the Father gives to me will come to me, and anyone who comes to me I will never cast out. Scripture literally ends with a call from God that basically says anyone who desires... Let him take the water of life freely without cost. Salvation is a free gift from the God of heaven, but it is only given to people who will let go of their sin, turn away from it, and trust in the Lord Jesus Christ. It is a free gift, but it's only given to men with empty hands. Don't go to God with your good deeds. We all righteously deserve hell. That's what I deserve. And Christ has had mercy on me. And my prayer is that he'll have mercy on you tonight.